I need sweats on. Why? Because it's Saturday. So I don't have to, you know, dress, dress. This is still dress. It's not my pajamas. You got your jammies on and it's afternoon. Go get dressed. Okay. Well, I am so excited to be here for what? Day four. Matter of fact, I'm going to mark our calendar. Day four of our metaphysical adventure. Our journey into the unknown. Okay, now, I, I want to talk about something really important because, you know, I, I try to be a support for you here, you know, and to, to be upbeat and have things to hopefully get you excited about and keep you positive in a time that can seem very negative. So I don't want you to misunderstand, though, and think that I do not take this seriously. This is, okay, this is a very serious time. What I'm hoping to do is to help you and help me stay positive in the midst of the negativity. So if we, you know, if we keep putting only negative stuff in, we're going to become just a nervous wreck. So I want you to know that I am taking this very seriously and I am being as lighthearted as I can to make the journey happier and, and more tolerable for all of us. This is about learning to cope and it's, that's the metaphysical part, you know. Our, we make our world and the quality of our world and what happens in our world through our thoughts, our feelings, and what we do with them. So, oh, good news, by the way, if you didn't see it online, I have ordered an, a new camera, okay? So um, hopefully if I'm foggy to you right now, it'll get better as of Thursday because Wednesday the new camera is supposed to be in. So I apologize if I'm blurry. I'm down in the campground office again, as you can probably tell, only I've switched around because I'm still trying to find a way to be as clear for you as possible. Okay, so let's go back to being serious about what we're going through. Um, I remember a day as clear as if it were yesterday. I was a young mom, at the time, I had three little ones. My daughter hadn't come along yet. And I was standing at the window watching my kids running around and playing. And I was worried about them. You know, I am the child of a worry wart, so I'm practically, you know, I inherited my uh, tendency to worry, which is why unity was such a blessing to me. But anyway... I was watching my children run around and I was thinking about all the things that could happen to them. You know, the what ifs we talk about, what if they get kidnapped, what if they go down and we had a drop off at the way back of our yard, what if they fell off, what if, you know, uh, what if they suffocated in their sleep. You know, I've always, always worried and one day I said to myself, wait a minute, I, what if? I worried about them every day and something happened to them anyway. That would have meant for as long as we were together, I would have wasted precious time that I could have enjoyed them and I wasted it worrying, okay? So you can worry and have the worst happen and all the time you had before the worst happened was the goodness was taken out of it by the worry. What if you worry about them all the time and the worst doesn't happen? Guess what? You spent all this precious time that you could have enjoyed them and relaxed and happy. You wasted worrying. So the worrying, it's not going to do anything but add stress raise our blood pressure. So yes, I understand. Yes, things are not a pleasant situation. But we have the power to 
hold our thoughts positive and have the best possible experience when we go on and this is a part of our past. We do have things to grieve right now, right where we are. Oh, if, if only things had turned out differently. Uh, oh, if we, uh, you know, had found out earlier. Oh, if people understood what made these things happen. Oh, if we had, yeah, it's grief because we actually lost life as we once knew it. Life as we once knew it no longer exists. But that doesn't mean life is bad or it's going to be like this all the time or life is not meant to be good because I believe life is meant to be good. We are grieving and we are suffering disappointment. Today I made uh, the decision that I was going to postpone, I was going to put on hold my recording for my audio book um, simply because it is the right thing to do, I believe, for me and for you and for everyone else. But that was a huge disappointment. I know we're all feeling huge disappointments. But take a breath and find something to fill the space, acknowledge the disappointment, and find something to fill that space because our minds are powerful things and can change your life in a heartbeat. First thing I'd like to do is um, share some good news, okay? Uh, the first good news I wanted to share is that uh, a friend of mine posted this morning, Todd Silva, thank you Todd out there wherever you are, he posted that the World Health Organization reported the first vaccine has begun uh, 60 day testing, <gasps> they're testing a vaccine. Um, that is after the genetic sequence of the virus was shared by China. Anybody that's looking down their nose at China saying, your fault, your fault, you're the blame. Look, nobody's to blame. This is what it is. But China shared that information as soon as they could and now they're working on a potential vaccine based on what was shared by China. And World Health, or, yeah, World Health Organization is now partnering uh, with those in, uh, in an international study called Solidarity Trials and with other many countries. And what they're doing is they're comparing uh, everybody's working to try to find, uh, find uh, the cure and to find um, vaccination. But what they're doing is they're internationally sharing their information. See, remember how we talked about we're all one? We're all one. Okay, now I'm just going to read the, the headlines of these because I got so many of them. I went online and I looked up good news about what we're going through. Okay, this is this came from a web page which I did not print that, so I don't know where it is. But if you look up good news uh, about the coronavirus, you'll find it. it says, out of about eighty thousand people sick from it in China, more than seventy percent have recovered and been discharged from hospitals. So we keep getting reports about how many are sick. Let's take a breath. Let's think about 70% are already recovered and discharged. Scientists have figured out how the novel coronavirus breaks into human cells, which is which will help significantly in developing treatments. Woohoo! More good news. Due to high levels of self-quarantine. Yep. Condigo, one of the two coronavirus clusters in Italy, has reported significantly fewer infections per day. Significantly fewer infections per day. Woohoo! Scientists in Canada have made massive breakthroughs 
in an effort to develop a vaccine. Woohoo! You know what? You really ought to join me when I do woohoo. I want you to woohoo with me, whether I can hear you or not. Number five, China is testing five different vaccine options, claiming it could have a vaccine ready by next month. Number six, vaccination trials in the U.S. are already underway. We saw that. I saw that on TV. I don't know if you saw it. And here's to all the people that are saying, I'll be a guinea pig. Thank you very much. We ought to remember to thank those folks. Number seven, a team of infectious disease experts calculated the fatality rate of Wuhan's coronavirus outbreak is about 1.4% drastically lower than earlier estimates. What do we say? Number eight, distilleries across the U.S. are making their own hand sanitizers and giving it away for free. Distilleries, woohoo! Number nine, air pollution has plummeted in cities with high numbers of quarantined individuals. Venice waters are running clear. What do we say? Woo-hoo! Number 10, John Hopkins researcher has claimed that antibodies from recovered coronavirus virus patients could help prevent, uh, protect people at risk. Woo-hoo! We're doing 23 of these, you know. Number 11, South Korea recoveries are starting to outnumber few in new infections. Let me read that over. South Korea recoveries are starting to outnumber new infections. Woohoo! Number 12, China is getting its feet back on the ground, opening parks at athletics, loosening travels restrictions. Woo! Woo! Number 13, China is has also closed its last coronavirus hospital not enough new cases to support it. Can't we hold that vision in our minds and our hearts? 14, Australian researchers are in the midst of testing two drugs as cures for the virus. Woo-hoo! Number 15, numerous businesses have stepped up to solve the crisis. And this talks about how we're all starting to work together. And that goes back to the oneness. In my town, we've got all kinds of good stuff going on. Uh, I can't tell you how many services because there's so many. People are out there to work together to get through this. I don't know why this is considered exciting, but it's one of the points on this list. But must be positive. Apple and Starbucks are reopening all stores in China. Okay. So you can get your coffee and your uh, computer stuff, I guess. Number 17, Metro Health Medical Center has developed a coronavirus test that gives results in hours, not days. Woohoo! Number 18, scientists in Israel have also noted the potential to announce a development of a coronavirus vaccine within weeks. Woo-hoo! Number 19, a San Diego biotech company is developing a coronavirus vaccine in collaboration with Duke University and National University of Singapore. Woo-hoo! Have we got stuck to woo-hoo about or what? I hope you're woo-hooing with me. Because that, you know what, that woohoo is acknowledging to your mind and to your heart and to your soul. Good things are happening. Number 20, a Japanese flu drug has proven effective in treating the novel coronavirus. Woohoo! Number 21, China has reported just one new domestic carnivore. Car- Chance on my eyes. Let's try it again. China has reported just one new domestic coronavirus infection for a second day in a row. Woo hoo! 22. Communities are coming together to help their neighbors. Well, we already 
talk about that. So it's not just the businesses, it's the people. We all, you know, I posted something today that said, we don't have a supply problem. We have a distribution problem. We all have something we can give, we can share. Uh, if you're in the uh, East Hattermoodas, Connecticut area, today there is a food drive. Oh, it's probably over my now. Uh, but the food bank, you can, that's how you can help, the food bank. You, there's so many ways we can help each other. And here's a real goodie that all of us that are in the at-risk category will love. A 103-year-old Chinese grandmother has made a full recovery from COVID-19. <laughs> She's probably a vegetarian. I mean, I'm just saying. But it motivates all of us who are in that age. Now, our daily word today, it's amazing how the daily word matches just what I wanted to say. I noticed that when I first started attending a Unity Church, I'd go to church and I'd be sitting there and the minister would be preaching and I'd be going, how did she know I needed to hear that today? What does she know about my private life and what's going on inside of my head? But that's another sign of our oneness, you see? We are in a flow, you know, we're all, do you ever watch fish swimming around in their little schools? I think sometimes we're kind of like that. It's, it's called a, a wave of consciousness. And, but so the daily word for today is focus. Focus. We're going to talk a little bit about the thoughts you hold in your mind and what happens in your life. Are you focusing and what are you looking at? You can get this online, go just look up Daily Word or um, <clears throat> that dailyword.org. Unity's got a great thought for every day. What if I were to tell you that what you're going through is all in your mind? Well, the virus may not be in your mind, but how you respond to it and the thoughts you choose to hold, to focus on, will manifest. So if you decide it's one of the worst, most horrible, terrible, frightening things that ever happened in your life, guess what? That's what your whole life is going to experience. Even when you go out, you'll probably, you know, after it's over and you're going out and getting back to life, you may just find that that fear will have will have landed itself and rooted itself in your being, and you're just going to spend the rest of your life waiting for the other shoe to drop. Is that what you want? It's not what I want. So my choice is to decide, to make the decision. I'm not going to let that get my thoughts, because thoughts are very powerful. We've said before that metaphysics are beyond the appearance, beyond the physical. Behind everything that you see, that you touch, look around your room, look at me in the computer, everything that you're seeing is, it had behind it a divine idea, an idea. And then we, we get these ideas and then we hold them in our thoughts and we manifest accordingly. As a very simple experience, I'd like to tell you about the manifestation of a chocolate cake, okay? So, you know, we're just innocently going around our day, we're behaving, and all of a sudden, wherever it comes from, a picture on a magazine cover, a TV commercial, however that thought gets into our head, we get this thing that says, chocolate cake. Chocolate cake. Now that's a thought. Now if we like chocolate cake, we're going to hold that thought. If we don't like chocolate cake, we're going to let it go. <laughs> Who cares about that? When we like that thought and we hold that thought, we have attached our thoughts and our feelings. And because our thoughts and feelings are in agreement within hours we will have a chocolate cake we will make it we will buy it we will find a way to get a chocolate cake 
That's the way we say in unity where the mind goes, energy flows, and manifestation follows. What do you want to manifest? During this period of uh, the confinement, how do you want to come out of it? I want to come out of it stronger. I want to come out of it healthier. I want to come out of it uh, um, uh, lighter. Uh, but I want to come out of it better than I went in. And, and I invite you to do that because if you use this as exercise, to exercise your mind, exercise your heart, exercise your soul, you will let that spirit of all that's good flow through you and you are going to make a difference in the world. You really are. You ever see that guy that walks around with a sign? It's a sandwich board and it says, repent, the end is near. Well, you know the word, you know what the word repent means? It means to rethink things, to think again. So when you're feeling fearful, when you're feeling depressed, a depression, do not give your life to depression. When that stuff comes up, you've got to stop it right there. Remember yesterday when I was talking about Florence? Stop it. When you get a negative thought, you can turn it around and think something positive, you're going to find that you can change this experience. You're going to come out of it with an adventure not with a horror story. That is up to you. Everything is a matter of time. And we don't know how long this is going to last. We pray it's not going to be long. But if we put too much energy into looking at how long it's going to last, you know, I remember when I was expecting, every, every time I was pregnant, you know, you'd be, oh, I'm so excited, I'm pregnant, I'm pregnant, I'm pregnant, I'm a baby. And then the months go on, and it gets to be not quite so comfortable, and puking, and all the stuff that goes with it. Then you get to be like nine months pregnant, you you can't move, you're walking around like this all the time, you feel like a boat. And then you say, when? When is that baby going to come? My kids were all late, except for the twins who were three weeks early, which is very unusual for twins. Usually they're earlier than that. Uh, so, but we waited and waited and waited. Then once that baby's out and our life has changed, our life as we once knew it no longer exists, as wonderful as it is, uh, sometimes we think, man, I remember the days when I only had to worry about me and my husband. You know, so let the time be, what if we looked at the time as a period of gestation? of birthing ourselves to a new, more magnificent being. Now it's not changing, you know, from the zygote to the embryo to the to the, uh, the little baby. Um, that baby, it hasn't really changed. It's just become more of what it's meant to be. And you are magnificent. So why don't we use this time? What if we were to look at our home or our circumstances as like a womb? And what we're doing is we're just stating. We just hope it doesn't take as long as a human baby, which is nine months. However, we really don't want it to be like an elephant pregnancy, which is two years. No, we don't want that. I want you to know and to understand and remember that your life is a gift. I was around in the 60s where there would be all those little flowers, uh, the posters that had flowers on them, and they said, grow where you're planted. Right now, you're planted, probably in your living room or wherever you're planted, you can grow even there. Another one of the big posters during the 60s, and you know what, the 60s were a pretty tough time with the Vietnam War, you know, and everything. And every, every night when you would watch television, like today at night, you listen to how many people have got the infection, how many people are in the hospital, how many people have died. During the Vietnam War, which was a long time, at night they would tell you how many soldiers were killed in Vietnam. And I can't tell you how horrible and, and depressing that was. It was a really, so now this is that type of experience where we're getting numbers we don't want. 
try to focus on the numbers I talked about earlier, the good ones. So the other po posters that would that were very popular at that time said, your life is a gift from God. What you do with it is your gift to God. And to me, that's one of those things. If we're taking care of ourselves, then we are taking care of the gift of life that God gave us. I'm sure you've seen the things on, if you go on Facebook, you've seen them, or maybe you've heard about them on the news. There's this um, a social media thing called TikTok, which I don't know much about it, except kids are really, and uh, young adults are very into. And they've got challenges, and their current challenge is licking doorknobs and toilet seats. And, and they, they, like they get money for it. A girl posted that she had made $4,000 for a video she posted on TikTok where she was licking a toilet seat. People pay for that? Give me a break. $4,000 is not worth anything to lick a toilet seat. So every day we've been talking about what have you been doing? You know, have you been uh, doing your journal? I pray you have. Have you been doing a gratitude journal? Gratitude journals are so important. I can think for a second about when you give someone a gift. Now, you don't give people gifts to receive praise, but when you give someone a gift and they love it and enjoy it, and especially if they, they say thank you, what do you want to do? You want to shower them with gifts. But if you give someone a gift and they complain about it, they stick their nose about it, up at it, it didn't cost enough money, it's the wrong size, it's the wrong color, you know I hate that. Do you want to give them anything else? Heck no. So in our own lives, if we keep praising, get that gratitude list going, you know, get something going, keep praising and giving thanks for what you have because what you bless, praise, bless, and give thanks for multiplies. Also remember what you gripe, moan, and complain about also multiplies. What do you want to multiply in your life? I know I want to multiply. Good. And I hope you do, too. Oh, okay. So the other things, goals. Do you have any goals? Did you do any of your goals? Uh, well, if you didn't, maybe it's time now. Today's Saturday. By the way, we're doing tomorrow early. I'm going to do I'm gonna do tomorrow at 11 o'clock in the morning. We're doing church. It's going to be wonderful because guess what? Church is Sabbath. It's easy. It's rest. So I hope you join me at 11 o'clock Eastern time. Then, now I did some things. The first thing I did, I played my guitar. I played with my guitar for at least five minutes. And then I was um, kind of looking for something. And I did we, I think we talked about it yesterday, about saying you're bored because bored people are boring people. So I kind of was just cleaning something up, goals. Keep the house clean and order them new stuff. And I came across, you're not going to believe this. I came across a hacky sack. Now, I had bought the hacky sack to send my grandson and put it in a drawer and forgot all about it. So I found the hacky sack and I said, well, that's something new I can try. <laughs> I'm going to try the hacky sack. <laughs> so what do you think I did? First thing I did was I went and looked up on Google how to hacky sack. And the first thing, and my kids used to do it. Boom, 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 boom. You know, they, they were just, oh, they can do it, I can do it. You know, so I got the old hacky sack on and uh, out, and I'm uh, trying to do this thing, and I forgot what they called already, but you, you throw it up and with the inside of your foot, you know. And I said, boom, and it went way over there, and I had to go get it. And then I took it back, and I, boom, and I did it again, and I had to go over there and get it. And then, I, boom, and it went up behind the television. And I I don't know if I'm going to be a hacky sacker. But you know what? Just for the heck of it, I may try it again. You know, we all have to have something in life to look forward to. So instead of waking up in the morning and looking at the news and saying, oh my God, there's no good news. We can't go out yet. I can't go shopping. Think about 
what you might have to look forward to that day. The whole day is ahead of you. Remember, this is a day of my life. It's a new day. The Lord has given me this day to do it as I choose. What do you choose to do with it? Okay, one of the best ways is writing that goals list or taking a calendar. I've got a calendar at home, and I put down the things I want to look forward to, the things that um, will make the day something to anticipate and not dread. I want to anticipate my days. What about you? We'll anticipate the good. We're going to go back for a second to the ye old uh, hacky sack. I am still I am still planning on fiddling around with it, but I have to get my sneakers out of the car because um, because they say you have to have sneakers. Did you know there's special shoes that are better for hacky sack? Well, I have a pair of shoes I'm going to use. Maybe one day I will actually hacky sack in front of you. Ah! We'll see if that ever happens. Okay. Um, so, uh, oh. I don't know where I went. Oh, I know what I wanted to tell you. I did jazzercise this morning. I did that uh, our jazzercise club. You know, if you're a member, they let you do it online. If you're not a member, you can still go to ondemand.jazzercise.com, and for $19 a month, you can jazzercise at home. i got to tell you, dance, the music, and the movement, it, it really lifts your spirit. It lifts, it lifts everything. It's really good. Now, another really important thing to do as you're going through this, you are confined, but it's not like you got one of those ankle things on you that you can't get out your door. You know, what, is, what do they call those shop collars on the dogs? You know, you can go out the door. You just don't want to get close to anybody. And if you live in a situation where you don't, you know, you're not shoulder to shoulder with everyone around you. It's important to go outside. Nature is healing. In the 18, uh, 1918 Spanish flu uh, epidemic, they found that people, uh, the, all the patients they had in the hospital, if they could get them outside, they'd get them outside in their beds, and they found that the sunlight helped to heal them, the fresh air and the sunlight and we got to remember what a gift that is. And the air is even cleaner now since there's not so many cars driving around. Always look for the good. I want to talk about input. Uh, our mind, remember, our mind has great power. We receive divine ideas. We also receive some not too divine ideas from the world around us. You want to be careful what we put in. You know, you want to make sure you put the right gas in the car, right? You want to put in gas, not water, or water cheapened gas, which I guess some people sell. Um, you want to make sure that you put good food in your body. You know, one of the things that first really changed my eating habits? Having kids. Having kids. Wow. When I held those babies and I said, I'm going to give you the best of everything. So what are you eating? You want to input good stuff. That doesn't mean you can't have any, any good comfort food. Comfort food is important, okay? Just keep it in its place. But you want to think of new kinds of food that you never tried. You know what I come up with? Some of the best things I ever made when I think there's nothing in the cupboard. And I would challenge any of you uh, in the message section here, uh, comments, feel free to comment like three or four ingredients which you think you're not going to be able to make dinner out of. I will be more than happy to give you some ideas. And we're going we're gonna to do a whole, uh, one of our sessions is going to be on that way. Uh, so be careful what you let into your body. Be careful what you let into your mind. Be careful what you let into your emotions. As a person living alone with my cat, thank God for my cat. She's a wonderful companion and when she's not being a pain in the butt, but she is a good, she's a good cat. Um, but sometimes I get very lonely. 
or you're overrun by your family. We've talked about that before. And that's when the emotions can get high and things can be mistaken. Take a breath. Remember that breath? You know, you can't think when you're breathing. So take that breath and relax. Let it go. And go outside maybe for a minute. And maybe if nobody's around and you live like I live out in the country, you can actually scream and nobody will hear you. Screaming is good. You can scream into your pillow. It's an excellent, excellent. Don't scare the daylights out of anybody. Oh, I'm better off that hear it. Find a safe place. Sometimes it does mean getting in the car and driving down the street, screaming and crying and coming back. But what you do is you dump it. You take out the trash, don't you? Take out the trash. And then we talk about spiritual input. One of the things we're going to discuss further down the line, uh, which today already my time is flying by, um, is going to be what has, you know, why did God do this? Or why did God let this happen? I've got a whole piece I want to share with you. I don't know, maybe I'll do that during church tomorrow. But for right now, I want to tell you a story about, uh, there was this war, you know, and there were bombs and there were uh, shooting and, and this guy ran out and he, he was so angry at God and horrified. And he, he yelled up and he said, God, why did you make this? Why did you make the war? Why did you make the bombs? Why did you make the bullets? And God said, I didn't make that. You did. There may be a virus we're dealing with. Did God did the, make the virus? Did the, it's just natural? Are there things we can look at that cause viruses that are beyond the physical things people are studying now? That's another whole realm of metaphysics, which we got to be a few weeks down the road to attack that one. But did God cause this? No. What we receive, we receive. Let's see what's most important is what we choose to do with it. I want to talk about a couple of things you don't want to do. You don't want to get miserable. You don't want to pick on people. You don't want to blame. And you don't want to overindulge. I came across an article, you know, a long time ago, and it kind of made me chuckle when I looked at it until I realized how serious it was. So I looked it up uh, the other day, and um, back then, which was months or maybe even a year ago when I read it, it talked about there is this phenomenon where um, at that time, especially women drinking wine on a Friday night who were all alone, would go online and shop. Well, that was back when it wasn't a problem. Today, many people drink and shop online. How big a problem do you think that might be? Drunk shopping, Google it. $43 billion a year. $43 billion a year drunk shopping. If you're stuck home, you're sure as heck not going to drink and drive. But now, remember, you don't want to drink and shop online either. So before you type in Amazon.com, make sure you're sober. Well, that is our adventure for today. I am so happy you were with me. And remember, we're going to have better pictures very soon, as soon as I get that camera on Wednesday. Thursday, I should be good to go. Um, I thank you for making, just seeing your, I can't see names because I'm too far away, but seeing people are with me and watching with me and commenting warms my heart. I pray to God I touch you. Okay? All right. So go do some stuff, um, write yourself some goals, put some stuff on the calendar, find something to look forward to. Every day, we all need something to look forward to. God bless you good.
Have a good one. <coughs> yeah. And make it go away. Yeah, I'll deserve a laugh. <laughs>